Okay, so this is the MAS Pro Plus and Pro L boxes. Uh, some people get them overheating. Now, this is usually, this is a, an L version, and that is a plus box. Um, the L version seems to be run hotter, basically. Uh, they put a bigger heat sink on it. That's the standard plus heat sink. They put a bigger heat sink on it, but they're still using rubbish glue. Um, they're using a, a sort of silicon plastic white glue that just they're putting too much on it, basically. Um, some I've had of the plus and they run at a decent temperature, uh, not too hot, not really cool, but not too hot. Uh, they're stuck on really firmly with exactly the same glue, but they haven't used too much of it. So it's conducting properly. These ones, the owls seem to all come with too thick glue. So you've got to do something about that if you want one that doesn't overheat. Um, sometimes they overheat and it's not really very warm in Britain at the moment. So in a 20 degree C, 68 Fahrenheit room, they can overheat. Um, what you can do is open them up. That's four little tiny screws on the bottom that are probably JIS, but you'll get away with a little Phillips um, as long as you push it in well. Um, those are four screws on the bottom. They're behind little little rubber feet that you have to remove carefully, trying to keep the glue actually on the rubber pad rather than staying on the box because then you can stick them back on easily and you can keep them on a bit of uh, backing uh, stuff, whatever it's called, um, label backing stuff. Right, so the, the uh, heat sinks they come with are six millimeter high and they're quite small. The tops just literally pull off once you've undone the screws. They're an interference fit and they just come off. Um, the L version has the Wi-Fi aerial stuck to the lid. So that's you know, minor annoyance, but not too bad. The heat sinks, 22 millimeter uh, on, the, uh, on the plus and 28 millimeter on the L. You just, to get them off, what you have to do is twist them like that, 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 back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now at first, especially if they're stuck on well, in which case you probably don't actually need to bother because they'll be working pretty well thermally anyway. But if they're stuck on well, you have to just keep turning them backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And at first they just won't move. They will feel like nothing is happening whatsoever. But you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And eventually they'll start to move by about a millimetre. Tiny amount, eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, and then it just gets bigger and bigger and then they just pop off. This one I've done already. Ding. So when they pop off, you've got to clean them up. You clean them with the edge of a credit card. Just scrape it off. Any glue that's stuck on there, there'll be a circle of, of white glue. Scrape it off with the corner. And the same with the box. And the um, on the chip, you just scrape it off with the with the thing and then you clean it with some uh, isopropyl alcohol or any old alcohol you've got handy really but as long as it's nice clean alcohol um, then what you can do is you can either stick it back on using a proper thermal glue this is arctic silver epoxy two-part epoxy it takes about five minutes to to cure but not really not fully it's workable for five minutes uh, just um, if you do it in the standard one-to-one -one mixture uh, and then it cures properly over an uh, hour or two uh, if you want to give it a proper curing if not five minutes <laughs> and then it will cure itself in in use uh, but I'd give it longer and you, you, you use that on it and a decent weight to hold it down while it cures if you just do that and stick the original one back on it'll be a lot better you can also fit in uh, a 10 millimeter or 11 millimeter high heat sink these are that's a 22 by 10 and that's a 28 by 11 um, they're bigger in mass as well as uh, in height so the standard one that comes off that one is 3.1 grams and this one which is the 10 millimeter high one is five grams so that's better and the 22 millimeter uh, sorry 28 millimeter one 
by 11 millimeters is 7.2 grams so that's that's kind of nice um, and it will sit and sit in there beautifully and help loads if you don't want to do it permanently as in if you use one of these glues it is absolutely permanent uh, you probably will be unable to ever get the heat sink off again um, there's the same kind of thermal glue that they use originally but just don't use too much of it that'll stick on a bigger heat sink um, and it'll work better than the original one and as long as you don't use too much of it just a tiny little dab press it down very firmly to spread it out um, that's always the method as well to just put a little dab of it in the middle and then spread it out really firmly um, this heat sink here which you can get in 22 millimeter and 28 millimeter is 15 millimeters high now that fits in very nicely and the lid holds it in position so can, you can use one of the pastes rather than an actual glue you can use an mx2 or an mx4 or one of the other acasa type um, thermal compounds that you use on cpus you know and they uh, they work really well and what you do is you just put this one on and you hold it in position with the lid screw the lid on and it screws it down and it gives you about a millimeter or two extra air gap at the edges but you really can't see it and it's not permanent you can take it off change your mind glue on a different one try with a bigger one again or whatever you want to do the other thing you could do is you can fit one of these little pie um, fans they're a 5 volt fan 30 millimeter 10, 10 millimeter deep and again they'll fit in with the lid just ever so slightly up but you will of course have to draw some holes in the lid because you want to get some air into it so you want to allow it to drag some air in so you'd have to drill some holes in there now the real point of this is what is the real point of this oh to show you how to get the the um the actual cpu cooler soc cooler off now this one i haven't actually done anything with but this l is getting very hot it's it's shut down on me a couple of times and it's not very warm at the moment in britain so it needs a better heat sink so to get it off you hold it down and you twist it now this one you can see it's already twisting i haven't even tried to do anything with it and you can see it moving and if you just keep moving it like this it just gets bigger and bigger and it's going to come off pretty damn easily hopefully you just keep doing it just keep twisting it twist 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 and eventually it should twist off it's a bit of blood a bit of sweat but try not to have any tears there we go anyway you just keep doing that until it comes off i'm going to give up at this point and do it again later um but that's what you do and that's how you do it hopefully you'll have as much luck as i've had because i've done a couple of these and they're great great box especially i must say with the uh, mag and dan's extra special roms that he makes that uh, are just great, really, available on Freetown. Thank you.